Hey, what's going on, No Nation? It's your guy, Kelvin Hunt, editor of ChopChat.com. Welcome to the Biffle Playmakers YouTube channel where we talk FSU all day, every day. Hopefully, you guys are having a great week. Um, man, this weekend went by way too fast. I was planning to get uh, some additional content out, um, but, uh, you know, life happens, and so here we are. But in this particular episode, we're going to talk about uh, college football recruiting rankings and the flawed system that uh, certain – uh, entities have in place uh, as a business. Um, I know a few sites uh, listed their updated rankings recently, and man, it is it is crazy um, how how these rankings are shaking out. Um, but yeah, um, if you are a fan of uh, college football recruiting, uh, make sure you like this, share it, subscribe to the channel if you're an FSU fan, or if not, if you just want some good uh, information. Uh, but yeah, so this. Um, Man, you know, college football fans are, you know, they some of them live and die by recruiting rankings. Um, I think they're important. You know, stars are definitely important. Um, but also your coaching staff's ability to evaluate talent is more important than than anything else. And of course, the ability to evaluate and develop that talent. And luckily, if the shoe has a team uh, or, or staff that can evaluate very well and also develop uh, that talent. Uh, usually you'll see FSU is one of the first schools to offer a particular kid that may have zero stars beside their name. And then you'll see other teams kind of come after that and, and offer that particular player. Um, I, can, I can name off a handful right off the top. Uh, FSU w was the first to offer uh, Luke Cromwell Hope, uh, KJ Bolden, who obviously you know went to Georgia, uh, Joshua Farmer. I mean, the list goes on and on. And, um, you know, all, you know, Chroma Hulk had no stars whenever. Well, he might have been a three star, but, you know, he didn't have any major offers. Uh, Farmer was a three star, uh, you know. So, again, it's, it's all about, you know, your the staff's ability to evaluate talent and then kind of go from there. But when you look at when you look at some of these players and, you know, you see the star rankings out there and. You know, it's like, you know, how how does how does that company come to a conclusion on that player receiving that ranking at, at that particular time? You know, some players receive, you know, their five stars, you know, before they're even a senior in, in, in high school. And it's just like, you know, how how is how is that possible? You know, and then, you know, as the process goes on, you will see a player, you know, see their ranking drop. You know, drastically, even though they had a, a really good senior uh, season. So, um, you know, it's uh, it's crazy. Also, how how these companies evaluate um, quality, I guess, of, of recruiting classes, you know, versus transfer in high school. Um, so I'm going to give you a couple of examples here and kind of what I'm talking about. And I want to hear from you guys in the comment section as far as if, if I'm just crazy or, you know, is there something that, that needs to happen with these recruiting rankings and changes uh, to a flawed system? Um, so let me um, let me share my screen here and um, we're going to look at a couple of things. Let's see. And if you haven't, make sure you like and subscribe again. Uh, turn your notifications on if you haven't. Um, that is um, how you can kind of stay up to date when I just drop something out of the blue. Um, let's go. Let's go here. All right. So here um, I'm going to use Miami and Florida State since that's the audience that's watching this probably is most familiar with those two teams. So here you see that Miami and Florida State, uh, when we're looking at the combined ranking, so this is high school and transfer portal miami has 37 commits to five stars 12 uh four stars 23 blue chips three star you sounds like <coughs> excuse me excuse me um average per player ranking of 90.14 fsu has 37 commits same amount as miami zero five stars which is funny when they had three at one point now they have zero 25 Four stars, 11, three stars with a 90.58 uh, per player average. So hear me out. 
the same amount of commits, 37 each, FSU has a higher per player average than Miami. So tell me how is it that Florida State is still behind Miami in the overall recruiting rankings? That makes zero sense. Also, um, now I took this picture before before each team added the, the last commit that they got. Um, so this is when they had 36 commits each. And look at this. So when you went to the, the class calculator on, this is on 247's composite rankings. When you went to the class calculator and you saw with 36 commits, Miami had a projected team score of 91.89. And then when you went to FSU with 36, they had a projected score of 312.03. And at the time, FSU was still one spot behind Miami in the overall rankings. And, uh oh, I'm sorry. Let me go back. I hadn't shared that part of the screen. So, with 36 commits, Miami had 291.89 projected team score. FSU, with 36 commits, had 312.03. Yet, they were still behind Miami. How was that the case? Um, so uh, my guys over uh, No Sweat D on uh, X mentioned that um, there could be something on the, back, on the back end that they take into account with transfer rankings. And in my opinion, uh, and I don't, you know, maybe that's true. I'm not sure. But, you know, whenever, whenever I look at it, you know, I value transfer portal players more than I do high school players um, because, simply these players can come in and play immediately, right? Um, I mean, most of the time, your high school players are not going to touch the field for the first year or two. Um, unless you're unless you're like a defensive back, you can get on the field early as a defensive back. You can get on the field early as a running back. Um, so every now and then, you can get on the field early as a wide receiver, but you got to be special. It's, it's a difficult transition from high school to college as a wide receiver, same for linebacker. And most of the guys in the trenches are going to have to wait one or two years before they're ready to play. Every now and then you'll have a guy like Miami's Ruben Bain last season who, you know, he's a grown man coming out of high school, but that's that's really rare. Um, so I value your transfer portal guys uh, more than I do high schoolers. Yeah, and so I'm going to use I'm going to use uh, another I'm going to use FSU here um, to to point something out also, um, and uh, let me see. I think this is it here. Yeah, so here we're going to scroll down, and these are the transfers, and you'll see. Almost all of the transfers that FSU has gotten are, are, are considered blue chip guys. Now, now here's something I want to point out. So we have uh, Sione Lolohia, uh, who is a defensive end from Oregon State. Out of high school, he, he had an 85-44 uh, three-star ranking. Uh, Lola Hale was a second team all pack performer uh, last season. So he has a 90 grade as a transfer coming to FSU for his final year. Now, scroll down to Marvin Jones Jr., who was an FSU legacy. FSU recruited him heavily out of high school. Ultimately, he went to Georgia. And uh, coming out of high school, he was a five star. 98 grade. Uh, Marvin has, has you know, played sparingly at Georgia's first two years, played a, a, a little bit more towards the end of uh, his sophomore year there before transferring, but you know, he just does not have you know a ton of production whenever you're you're looking at you know the overall picture. And um, let me see if I can pull up his stats really quickly. Um, so Marvin had 12 tackles last season. 
and one sack and four and a half tackles for loss. But then when you look at Lola here, Lola here have 47 tackles. He had eight and a half tackles for a loss. And he had, I think it was one and a half sacks. And he also had seven quarterback hurries. So this is another instance. So now I understand that Marvin Jones Jr. can, you know, probably has a higher ceiling still uh, because he has two years remaining, um, you know, in college and over here has one, uh, you know, that's part of the part of why guys in high school have a high ranking is based on potential, how they project, but you know, it's, it's potential. You don't know how it's going to pan out really. Um, but what I'm, what I'm, what I'm saying is, you know, how, how is it that, we know what these two players are at this point or what they have been at this point. So how is it that Marvin Jones still has a higher rating as a transfer than Lolo here does as a transfer, even though Lolo here is a way more proven player. I mean, he's a second team, all, all conference guy. Now I'm not saying Marvin, you know, even going into this year, uh, with FSU, you know, obviously both guys will be playing. It is quite possible that Marvin Jones Jr. will have a better year statistically than Lola Hill. Very well possible. But I'm saying going with what we know now as a transfer, it would make sense to me that Lola Hill is ranked higher than Marvin Jones Jr. because we know we know what he – the production is there. Right. Um, you know, there's some guys, you know, you know, you, you look at some guys and you're just like, you know, well, how, you know, how did you get that ranking you know, anyway? Right. Um, but I think, I think recruiting services really have to go back to the drawing board as far as transfers. If you look here uh, now, most of these guys are, are blue chip guys. The FSU has, but you'll see this almost like, you know, two four seven said, "Oh well, they were really highly ranked out of high school. Um, they haven't really done much here in Sean Murphy's case. They haven't really done much, uh, but he's really talented. Still has a really high ceiling. So we're going to give him, you know, a ninety one rating. And then here, Rodell Williams was a, you know." 96th grade out of high school. Rodell's been had some production at Alabama in the past. He's more he's shown more production than than Sean Murphy has, but he still has a 91 ranking. The same ranking as Sean Murphy. How is that possible? That makes zero sense. Again, Lolo Hare was a second team all pack performer. He's he's a 90 grade. Durajaya from West Virginia has a 90 grade. DJ U has a 90 grade. Malik Benson was the number one Juco player before he went to Bama last year. He had 13 receptions last year. Now, a big part of that wasn't his fault because Alabama's passing offense was, was terrible, but he has a 91 grade. Earl Little, 90 grade. Jalen Brown didn't even have a catch last year for LSU, and he has a, a 92 grade as a transfer. So I know some, you know, Miami fans or whatever may be on here, and they're like, oh, you know, he's an FSU homer or whatever. But, I'm, I mean, really, the point of view I'm taking here is, is not doing FSU any favors because, you know, some of these guys, we know they're, they're really talented. They're just unproven. And, but we already know the FSU coaches have a track record of taking guys in that position and, and getting that production from them. Um, so I'm not I'm not really worried about that. You know, again, I've already stated that FSU coaches can can evaluate and um, and get production from from talented players. So that's that's not a problem. 
my point is just overall across the board, um, just take FSU, Miami, whoever out of the equation. This this is just this is just lazy work, um, in my opinion, from these recruiting services. You know, they kind of it's almost and I, look, I get it. It's a it, it it's it's a lot of work to look at film. Well, first of all, you got to have people to know what they're looking at when you're looking at film. But you know, it's a lot of players out there in the transfer portal. You're talking about you know two thousand players. Um, but if you if you're going to call yourself you know a standard of the industry or whatever, then you probably need to to adjust these things and and and, and you know try to become more accurate opposed to just you know, slapping grades on players because, you know, whatever. Um, and let me go back to this. And here's another thing. So going back to, going back to guys being ranked five stars early and then losing, losing that, that fifth star for whatever reason. Um, FSU had uh, running back Cam Davis. He was ranked as a five star. And look, this this can be said for multiple schools. I'm not. I'm just talking to FSU because I know FSU. Uh, but Cam Davis was a was a five star running back for a long time. And then, for whatever reason, uh, in his senior year, you know, he began to drop in the rankings, and you know, he finishes a composite four star. Landon Thomas was ranked forever as the number one tight end in the country. And then um, this past year, his, his ranking began to drop and he dropped, you know, over a hundred points. You can look, you can look right here. It's, it's 108. He dropped a hundred points. And then they have him as the 11th best tight end in, in the, in the country. And so then when you go and look at, um, let me see if I can find this. Where was it at? Um, one of the guys from the recruiting services. Gosh, where is it at? He basically, he basically said that they one of the reasons they dropped Lennon Thomas was because he didn't attend some All Star camp that they thought he was going to attend, and some other guys, some other guys. Um, went to that camp and I mean I understand wanting to get data points and seeing guys against other really good players or whatever but I don't think anything should outweigh um, the games that the guys actually play in um, and when you look at Landon Thomas's stats from uh, the games in his senior year um, and then you compare them to a guy that's um, ranked higher than him now. It's not even a comparison. I can't find that tweet, but somebody somebody did the legwork and, and posted it. Um, and it might be here. Uh, I don't know where it is. But um, but yeah, it's um it makes no sense. What what I what I would suggest is. Recruiting recruiting services should not should not give any players a fifth star before their senior year uh, because they're just so these guys are still growing um, you know some of them change schools I mean there's a lot of different dynamics that come into play um, but you know whenever whenever you're looking at uh, how you know how they go about given rankings you know I'm, I'm sharing the screen right here it says this is 247's rating explanations you know five stars are the top 32 players in the country to mirror the, the 32 first round picks in the nfl draft and then four stars are guys that believe are most likely to produce college careers to get them drafted um and then three stars so forth and so on um you know what? What changed in 
whatever five stars that these guys had, you know, at one point, what change? I mean, you as at one point you thought they were going to be, you know, a, a first round NFL pick. So at what point, what changed to make that so that that's not the case, right? So I think it's more. Than, I think it's smarter to probably, you know, uh, under promise and over deliver on that more so than vice versa because. You know, it's, it, it makes more sense to kind of give a guy, you know, have a guy as a four star and then look at the progression of the player. You can see how much weight to put on. If you got any faster, if they got taller, you know, whatever. Look at their production, you know, and then you say, oh, you know, as they go through their senior year or go to camps, you know, like, hey, yeah, this guy looking at everything that we looked at, this guy's, you know, this guy's definitely a, a five star or whatever, opposed to, you know, saying a, a particular player is a five star in his junior year, um, and then as the season goes on, um, saying you know what we might have been wrong on that, so now we don't think he's a five star anymore. You know what? what that, that makes that makes no sense. So if, if you're already telling me you're wrong um, on on a player because you're taking the fifth star away, then why should I believe all your other projections? Right. Um, and then when it comes to the composite rankings, I mean, you're looking at there's two, four, seven, you have on three um, and on three. Um, the founder of on three was a guy that created two, four, seven. And then you have rivals and you have ESPN. Look, I'm going to just tell you, I don't even look at ESPN. I don't even look at rivals. Um, two, four, seven is probably your, your best bet as far as accuracy uh and on three is not terrible but they're still behind in my opinion 247 but espn and rivals just they don't even dedicate the resources to um whatever staffs they still have i know back in the day they used to have you know more more support more guys out there actually doing the leg work but now I know that's not the case. Uh, ESPN can't even keep guys on TV, so you know they don't have the resources to put towards recruiting rankings. And their rivals just, you know, they've just fallen behind um, the other two by quite a bit. Um, but the composite rankings still include rivals and ESPN, so that can, you know, that can kind of throw off those composite rankings also. So I, I do need to put that out there. Um, but yeah, these um, you know, these recruiting rankings guys are you know something something's got to something's got to give. Um, also, uh, one other thing, uh, uh, let me go to let me go to Miami's commit list here. And I look, look I would have said this had he had he stayed with FSU. Um, Armando Blunt, uh, you know, click on him here. Armando was class of 2025 and reclassified to 2024. Uh, very smart kid, obviously, 16 years old, and still, still is going to have, still going to need a year or so before he's, you know, he's ready to to play at a high level, more than likely, and. The composite score has him as the 22nd best player in the country at 16. And again, he's probably not going to see the field um, as a freshman. You know, there's something there's something wrong with that. Um, you know, I, I just don't see. I just don't. I don't understand how you can rate a kid that high when, um, you know, he's not even he's not even going to play his first year more than likely. Um, and FSU is probably going to get. Damn, I keep forgetting to share the screen here. My bad. Um, FSU is probably going to get a commit from a kid uh, in a similar situation with Amari Williams. Um, Amari was uh, ranked as an athlete in the class of 2025, a five star. He was reclassified to 2024, and uh, his his ranking did did go down. Uh, you know, he's uh, ranked in the top 200. Which is, which is more of what I would agree with because at his age, again, he's 16. Um, he's going to need a year or two before he's able to contribute at FSU. 
so if you if you did that with him, um, you know why wouldn't you do that with uh, Blunt? Now Blunt does have you know he does weigh two fifty, so and, and Amari weighs about two fifteen two twenty. So I, I do understand that, but I still don't think um, Blunt should be the number twenty two composite player in the twenty four class after reclassifying at sixteen. Um, you know again that's you know these recruiting services. Um, projecting what a, what they think a player will be which which I which I get but at the same time we we also see NFL teams do this and we see how how often they're wrong um, with doing that um, so uh, I think you know you need to kind of go back to the drawing board and look at um, you know Production is a big time competition that you play against. And you, you can still have projections in there based on, you know, size and frame and how fast that guy is and, you know, all that good stuff. Um, but, you know, and, it's, and this is impossible to be, you know, entirely accurate. I understand that as well. But there's just way too many flaws in these recruiting rankings. Um, there's also a lot of politics. Um, I know a lot of people may, may not realize this but um <laughs> there's a there's a lot of politics to go into uh, these recruiting rankings um you know some guys you know get offered by a team and they automatically become a certain stature um some guys may be committed to a, a team a smaller team and you know they'll be you know they'll be a three star at the time and then they may flip to a, a certain school and then they automatically become a four star, uh, uh, which is which nothing changed. Nothing changed except you know they flipped from a smaller school to uh, a big time program, you know. So um, so there's there's some politics uh, in this thing too. Um, but yeah, but let me know in the comments. You know, am I am I far off on this on this line of thinking? Um, and just to recap, um, I don't think these recruiting services should issue five stars to guys who are, who are not even seniors yet. Um, these recruiting services need to fix these recruiting calculations because there's no reason that two teams should have two teams that have the same amount of commits. One team has the higher per player average yet they're behind the other team in the overall rankings. That makes zero sense. Also, uh, transfer portal guys should be valued more than high schoolers because they can come in. Well, generally, they can come in and make a higher impact, a bigger impact. Even if you have less production uh, as a transfer player, you can you, you, usually you've been in college for one or two years and you're physically ready to compete. And that is that is the one of the biggest obstacles for high schoolers. You know, they just. Physically, they're not ready to complete uh, to compete. Excuse me, um, and that is one reason why um, Mike Novell's had so much success with turning FSU around so quickly. Is um, instead of taking high schoolers, you know, he went to the transfer portal and got guys who could who could play like immediately, and that um, really helped them close the gap. Uh, but in that 2021 2022 season, and now we've seen that success parlay over into high school because guys see oh. You know, they are a better product, so forth and so on. Um, but, yeah, um, you know, that is um, that is my thoughts on um, this is something I've been you know, wanting to, to get out there. Uh, but then whenever they released these latest rankings, I was like, man, this is this is crazy. You know, um, I don't I don't know. I don't know, you know, again, it's a business, you know, these guys, these, these, um, these sites, um, usually are subscription based. Um, so you know, they are looking to make money. So you have to take that into consideration as well. And, um, and, you know, they may cater to the teams with larger fan bases because those are the schools that are going to give them, the, you know, going to make the most money for them. So when I mentioned schools, you know, a, a player may be a, a, a three-star at one school and then flip into a larger school. There you go, right? Because they know 
those larger schools are going to bring more fans. They're going to bring more subscriptions, so forth and so on. So uh, if you're an FSU fan, again, uh, I wouldn't get too caught up in the rankings. Um, uh, the coaching staff has more than proven that they're um, one of the top program uh, programs out there as far as player evaluations. Um, you know, they they kind of have a blueprint what they're looking for at each position. I know I know some of you are dying and we want you know blue chip guys all over the place, and you know, that's fine too. But at the same time, um, it's all about you know. Allocating resources, you know, some positions have more importance than others, um, and I think you kind of noticed that with FSU. Um, you, you know, they are, you know, they they look to nail the quarterback position. Um, they've they've been recruiting there well um, the last year or two. Um, you know, they've been looking to bring in a higher caliber offensive lineman. I think they understand that uh, it takes a while for offensive linemen to get on the field, and so they are really trying to not rush the guys that they have uh, signed. So that's why you haven't seen Jalen Early and Julian Armella out there. Um, but I expect them to be out there this year. Um, defensive um, defensive tackle, defensive end. I think FSU values the portal more than um, high school uh, rankings. Again, it's, it's just sheer, you know, it takes a while to get on the field. Uh, but you 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 saw that the defensive end that FSU did take uh, from the high school ranks this past uh, recruiting class uh, and Diddy Holmes, you know he's six four six five two sixty, um, so you know he you know he's not an early enrollee, so it's going to you know hamper him a bit uh, in his contributions as a freshman. But if he were able to enroll early, uh, he's somebody that you probably could see out there uh, a bit more than usual because of his size and physicality so um but yeah fsu um you know they, they brought in a ton of wide receivers you know this past season they had um, some depth issues and you know they wanted to eliminate that problem the same way they eliminated the def defensive tackle depth issues from 2022 we saw what they did in the portal to correct that and so um, I've said it a gazillion times, but, you know, Mark Novell and the staff have a plan um, for, you know, their roster and what, what they're looking to do. They know what they want to do. And um, usually they go out there and execute it. So um, and that's what they've done. You know, they've built um, you know this this portal class around uh, DJU and, um, you know, they've almost met every need. Uh, when it comes to the transfer portal, um, you know, there's probably one or two more spots that they'll fill uh, in the uh, after the spring. Uh, but this program is uh, in a position to to have uh, some major success in 2024, as I mentioned on the uh, the latest video when the uh, ACC schedule was fully released. So, uh, so yeah, but yeah, I'm um, starting to ramble here, so I'm going ahead and cut it. Uh, I wanted to, to get some info up and content out to you guys here um, uh, before the weekend uh, surpassed since I said that's what I was going to do uh, in the last video I did the other day. But again, appreciate the support and um, well, we'll look to get uh, some more content out to you guys in the next day or two. Uh, but until next time, go Noles.